Hi, I'm Chao Wei Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and Frederick Health Hospital. Today we're going to do a quick video of the 12 steps of DK crush bifurcation stenting. This is taken from my full video on DK crush, which you're also welcome to check out, and I've included that, uh, the link below. So in DK crush, as in all uh, non-provisional bifurcation stenting techniques, the first step is to wire both branches. Now, a few, uh, a few tips. Um, sometimes wiring that side branch can be tough. Um, hydrophilic wires like a Pilot 50 or a Whisper can sometimes help. If that doesn't work, uh, typically I would try a dual lumen microcatheter such as the uh, Suzuki or an angled microcatheter. I uh, generally reach for a Supercross 90 or 120. Um, the 45 degree version has um, almost never worked well for me. So in step two, uh, you pre-dilate both branches. Uh, in our case, I dilated the uh, diagonal branch with a 2.5 uh, by 15 millimeter balloon. And uh, you want to do this well. Uh, it will make your life easier. And, and notice that I protruded my diagonal balloon into the LED uh, to make sure I catch the ostium of the diagonal. I'm really not worried about causing a dissection here uh, since I have wire access to both branches and also since my plan is already to stent both vessels anyway. And uh, here we are uh, pre-dilating the LED with a uh, 35 by 50 millimeter balloon. Again, really prep the vessel. Um, I, I will also often do uh, kissing inflations uh, with the pre-dilation balloons. And notice how I left the diagonal balloon in place uh, to do just that. I found that this helps uh, prepare the uh, bifurcation more nicely and will make, uh, will make delivery of uh, stents uh, easier uh, later on. Okay, so now we are ready to stent uh, the side branch. Um, I generally like to place the side branch stent so that it protrudes uh, two to three millimeters uh, into the main branch. Uh, you don't want to protrude the stent too much uh, because that will result in too much crushed stent material uh, in the main branch. But you don't want to protrude the stent too little either. And this is because once the side branch stent gets crushed, uh, that stent becomes bent at the ostium of the side branch, and this will leave the distal part of the side branch ostium uncovered. And uh, protruding the side branch stent by two to three millimeters into the main branch helps to uh, reduce uh, this effect. Uh, you'll, notice, you'll also notice that I have an uninflated balloon in the main branch. Uh, that's actually the most, most important thing to remember here. Make sure that you pre-position your crushing balloon in the main branch before you deploy the stent in the side branch. I, I cannot overemphasize how important this is. If you don't do this, you'll be hosed. Uh, it will be extremely difficult to pass the balloon uh, uh, into the main branch once your side branch stent is deployed, and you'll only uh, make this mistake uh, once. Uh, once your main branch balloon is in place and you're happy with the position of your side branch stent, go ahead and deploy uh, the, uh, the side branch stent. Uh, after that, uh, make sure you uh, post dilate the stent nicely and make sure the side branch looks good uh, before uh, moving on to the next step. I also like to flare uh, the proximal part of the side branch stent. You do this by positioning your post dilating balloon so that part of it uh, protrudes uh, proximal to the stent. Uh, I find that this, uh, this helps to ensure uh, that the distal part of the side branch ostium stays covered after the side branch stent is crushed and becomes bent. Okay, so now we're ready to crush the side branch stent. Uh, we uh, crushed the uh, side branch stent with a um, 4.0 uh, by 15 millimeter NC balloon that uh, we had uh, pre-positioned in the LED. Uh, you really want to make sure the stent is well crushed. Uh, use high pressure inflations. And I found that it's, all, uh, it's okay to uh, leave the uh, side branch wire in place. It's actually rare uh, for it to get trapped at this stage. Okay, so what if you forgot uh, the most uh, important step uh, to pre-position your NC balloon in the main branch uh, before deploying uh, the stent in the side branch? Well, uh, I'm sure you'll be uttering a few choice four-letter words uh, in this situation, but the first thing that you could do uh, is you could get lucky and just try to pass your NC balloon. That it could simply just cross into the main branch anyway. If not, uh, you can try to partially crush the side branch stent uh, with a smaller compliant balloon first, 
and gradually upsize until the larger NC balloon can cross for the final crush. Um, if that doesn't work, uh, you can convert to a culotte technique. Uh, in this case, you'll need to dilate the proximal part of the side branch stent even more uh, to oppose it to the main branch uh, vessel wall, and then rewire the main branch uh, through the side branch stent cell. Uh, you can watch uh, uh, my uh, culotte videos uh, to learn more about uh, how to do the culotte technique. All right, so um, after you've nicely crushed the side branch stent, uh, you're ready to rewire the side branch through the crushed side branch stent cell. Ideally, if you can, uh, cross into the side branch through a more proximal cell. This will make passing balloons easier uh, later. I must say that um, uh, rewiring the side branch through a, a crushed stent can be quite difficult, and this is one of the reasons I'm not a huge fan of crush techniques. But again, if you're having trouble, uh, try using hydrophilic wires, angled microcatheters, or a dual lumen catheter. Sometimes the wire uh, could be getting uh, uh, stuck in a proximal stent strut uh, if you haven't fully crushed the stent. So IVIS and OCT can help here. You may need to crush the side branch stent even more. Once you've uh, rewired the uh, side branch, you then uh, do the first uh, kissing balloon inflation of the uh, double kissing uh, crush technique. Uh, in our case, uh, we use a 2.5 millimeter NC balloon in the diagonal and a 3.5 millimeter NC balloon in the LED. I will usually sequentially dilate the side branch and main branch uh, before doing the kiss. Uh, passing the balloon into the side branch can be as tough as trying to wire it, sometimes even tougher. If you're having trouble, uh, start with smaller compliant balloons and then serially dilate up. Uh, but remember, uh, never dilate the side branch stent without having another balloon pre-positioned in, uh, in the main branch first. Because any time you dilate a side branch stent, its strut could become bent and, uh, and, become, uh, and come sticking out into the main branch, and that would make crossing back into the main branch with the balloon uh, difficult or, or impossible. Okay, um, now uh, we're ready to stent the main branch. Uh, I usually position my main branch stent so that it starts at least eight millimeters proximal to the bifurcation. Uh, this is to allow for pot inflation later on since the shortest balloons that we have, uh, at least in the United States, are, are six or eight millimeters. Uh, in our case, I uh, deployed a 4.0 by 28 millimeter DES in the LED, and I found that it's okay to leave the side branch wire in place here um, during uh, main branch stent deployment, but I will usually pull it back a little bit. I, I do usually prefer to remove the side branch wire before post-dilating the main branch stent. Um, after the main branch stent is deployed, uh, make sure you post dilate it very well uh, before attempting to recross into the side branch. In our case, uh, I used a 4.0 and 4.5 millimeter NC balloon for post dilation. And notice how our uh, side branch wire is now pulled back uh, proximal to the, uh, to the stents. Um, you really want to make sure the main branch stent is well expanded and opposed to the vessel wall. This helps reduce the chance that your side branch wire uh, could go under a stent strut. Sometimes I will use OCT and IVIS to help confirm. Uh, next, uh, rewire uh, that side branch again. Um, again, this can be very difficult to do now through two layers of stent material. As before, uh, hydrophilic wires, angled microcatheters, or a dual lumen microcatheter can help. If you keep getting stuck, it could also be that your main branch stent is not yet completely opposed and you uh, might need to post dilate it some more. All right, uh, once you've got your wire down the side branch again, you're ready to do the second uh, kissing balloon inflation of the double kissing uh, crush technique. In our case, uh, we use a 2.5 millimeter NC balloon in a diagonal and a 3.5 millimeter, I mean, I'm sorry, a 4.0 millimeter NC balloon in the LED. Again, I, I usually uh, sequentially dilate the side branch and main branch before doing the kiss. Uh, we talked about this earlier, but passing an NC balloon into the side branch can be rough. If you're having trouble, start with uh, smaller compliant balloons and seal, uh, serially dilate up. Um, but again, remember, uh, to uh, never dilate uh, any side branch stent without having uh, another balloon already pre-positioned in a main branch. You may have uh, trouble doing it uh, if you don't have uh, a pre-positioned uh, pre balloon uh, already there. 
Uh, next, uh, we post-dilated uh, the proximal part of the bifurcation using a 4.5 by 8 millimeter balloon. Uh, this is known as POT or the proximal optimization technique, and it's done to ensure that the proximal part of the stent is rounded up again in shape and well opposed to the vessel wall. And this is especially important to do if you don't routinely do intravascular imaging to check your work. Uh, a quick note is that you could use Finet's law uh, to size your pot balloon. I've done another video about this. Um, in this case, the distal main branch was 4.0 millimeter and the side branch was 2.5 millimeter. So by Finet's law, the proximal main branch should be 4.4 uh, millimeters in diameter. Um, so we used a 4.5 millimeter balloon to do uh, the pot. Uh, finally, I generally do uh, intravascular imaging whenever possible to make sure everything looks good. In this case, uh, we did IVIS and it showed good stent expansion and apposition. And um, here is the uh, final angiographic result, which uh, we thought looked uh, quite satisfactory. Uh, the patient did well and uh, went home the next uh, day. Uh, he um, had a non-STEMI, so we recommended uh, at least one year of uh, DAPT. Um, but um, for uh, complex bifurcation stenting, I will generally recommend at least one year of DAPT, uh, even for uh, non-ACS patients. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, go ahead and uh, click on the link to check out my full uh, DK Crush video.